Hello and welcome to another F-22 Total Air War Let's Play video and this is the next mission on the Eritrea tour it's called Armed Reese and this is a pretty easy mission we've got to do a reconnaissance flight over the industrial area deep within Ethiopia we need to identify the power station and here's the map of the waypoints we need to take off in Saudi Arabia and fly across the Red Sea we need to refuel in Eritrea and then go into Ethiopia and we're going to do this all in stealth and hopefully we won't need to engage anybody so we start on the runway at the airbase and we'll go full power and here we go and we're airborne now if we've got to refuel I'm just going to turn off my afterburners as quick as I can we've probably only got a small amount of fuel We've got one wingman with us today. I'm going to tell him to go into deuce loose formation. And here we go. If we check the tactical display, there's no threats around. I'm going to flick on the autopilot. and get there as efficiently as we can it's six o'clock in the morning so the normal mission I think it defaults to four o'clock in the mornings and it's really dark and of course if you're doing a reconnaissance flight you want to be flying in the dark but I don't think it's too good for this video so I've, I've moved this mission to a later time. Here's the AWACS. He'll be helping us out by identifying any contacts within the range of its rotor dome radar. That's on the top there, you can see it spinning around. Now we're up to just over 15,000 feet, just past the speed of sound. And we need to head to waypoint 2, which is about 120 miles away. It's going to take about 10 minutes to get there. Now we're cruising at 20,000 feet. We don't have much ordnance. We've got a couple of medium range missiles. And I think we've got two Sinewinders heat seeking missiles. We're going to press shift and T to speed up time where we can. If we check our fuel, we've got about half a fuel tank. We don't have any external tanks. There's some F-22s to our right of us, uh, just ahead. So hopefully we won't need to engage anything. There's a blue triangle to the left of us, at the far left of this tactical display, that's a neutral aircraft. And there's some friendly Mirages and friendly Eurofighters over Eritrea. And we're coming up to the coast of Eritrea now. We're going to turn to waypoint 3. And whilst it's quiet like this, um, I've had a look around on Amazon and eBay and F-22 Total Air War 
any second hand copies have, have seemed to have disappeared over the last few weeks. I think people just watch these videos and they're going ahead and buying this and replaying it. So I, I, I've got my original copy luckily and um, if the original makers are watching this series of shows I think there's going to be a lot of interest if this was re-released with new graphics and any updates. And I'm sure the code's lying somewhere in some hard drive. So it shouldn't be too much work to get this sold again. And I'll be happy to pay £20 for an updated version. So if Mr Ken White's watching this, uh, I think they started a new company called Starship. And you can find that on YouTube. Then uh, yes, we're, I think there's a lot of people who might want to play these sort of games again or a simulation so we say <laughs> right there's a friendly ground contact over here let's have a look it's a friendly surface to air missile launcher you can see there's three missiles on the back of this uh, tracked vehicle And there's a Vulcan over here by this coastal city. If we zoom out. The KC135 refueler is at waypoint 3, so I think it's just beyond waypoint 3. It's just over 100 miles away. And there's a Mirage just ahead of us here, a friendly one. You can see it's a very small plane and there's a extended refueling uh, probe at the front there. And there's a two-seater plane, you can see there's two pilots there. One thing I've noticed with the pilots in all the planes, they always face you when, when you're viewing the plane. They always turn around and look at you, which is a bit disconcerting. And there's a pair of Eurofighters over here. And these are friendly ones. And off they go. And there's something over here. There's a, another friendly Vulcan tank. And there's an F-15 over here, just ahead. I wonder if we can just have a quick look at it. We can only look at something if it's within visual range, so we need to get a bit closer, and here we are. And this was the plane that wasn't chosen by the Shah of Iran. I spoke in the last video about the Shah of Iran choosing either an F-14 or an F-15 to defend uh, Iranian airspace, and that was the one that lost out to the F-14. The KC-135 is coming up now. I'm going to switch to our refueling HUD mode. And I've been trying to practice refueling manually and I haven't succeeded so far so we're going to have to use the autopilot. It is possible to shift and press S to skip refueling once you've accepted that your nose cold but um, for the purposes of this video we're not going to do that now the KC-135 is in visual range so 
So let's have a look at it. There it is. You can see the refueling hose out the back of this plane with two little wings. The operator can control this hose so it can direct it into the female connector on the F-22 and that's on the main fuselage. The KC-135 is at about 27,000 feet and we're coming out to about 20 miles of the KC-135. We're going to ask permission to refuel and we're going to press Y on the keyboard to confirm we're nose cold. We can now switch to the refueling autopilot mode and press autopilot and it'll do it for us. So this is pretty neat. As long as your plane isn't severely damaged then you can refuel like this. So here we go coming up to the underbelly of the KC-135 Here we go. This is all done automatically. And if the refueler decides to bank on its circular circuit, it will bank for us as well, so we don't need to do anything. Right, I'm going to skip the video because we need to sit to one side and let our wingman refuel as well so we'll see you in a second welcome back and our wingman has refueled as well he's just disconnected from the refueler and we're going to be going on our way I'm going to make sure we're back to our waypoint autopilot mode and now we're going to head to waypoint 4 autopilot and here we go we're just spinning around to waypoint 4 Now you can see there's already a red triangle that's an enemy air contact and the autopilot is flying us on a pre-designated course so we're dropping altitude now I'm going to tell my wingman to go into a strike tight formation because that will mean we can hide our numbers to any enemy radar a bit like in Star Wars where the sand people will walk in single file to hide their numbers because uh, we, we're not really kitted out for any major air to air combat we don't have many missiles and we've only got one wingman so the autopilot is flying us really low and this is called terrain masking and that also hides our radar signature and we're going to go speed up time as well not a lot to see here, a bit of desert and uh... Warning, ground proximity.
We're flying between 200 to 1,000 feet and we use up more fuel at a low altitude and we fly slower. But the good thing is that any enemy radar warning stations, they, they won't be able to see us because radar can't read through hills and mountains. Now we can see waypoint 5 is not too far away from waypoint 4 and waypoint 5 is where the power station is so we must be in enemy territory now or pretty close to it I can see there's no friendly aircraft ahead now so we're on our own and there's already a enemy surface air missile launcher to the right it just quickly uh, disappeared behind that hill I was just going to see if there's any more and there isn't we've got to be careful because if we fly around the surface to a missile launch site we've got to make sure it doesn't have a clear shot when we fly behind it if it's got a valley and have a clear shot And a wingman has had a missile launched at it. Now even though we're flying close together, he's flying above me, so he's going to be taking any missile hits. Now, I've jumped into our wingman, you can see he's flying above me. And this is the strike type formation. Now there's some enemy air contacts just to the right of us and there are MiG-21s and another set of MiG-21s ahead. Now we're in MCOM manual setting 2 so we're not emitting any radar signals so we should be able to sneak through. Yes, yeah, so Wingman's telling us now that there are a set of MiG-21s flying 58 miles away at a bearing of 260 degrees flying at a medium altitude and that's how to read that kind of radio chatter now we're flying over this hill we've got to be very quiet the objective of this mission is to sneak in stealthily and sneak out stealthily now those MiG-21s they probably got their radar on because they're combat air patrols but they shouldn't see us because of our stealthy construction and we're emitting very low emissions I'm going to fly over here because if we fly on head on then we might get picked up by the radar envelope of these planes so I'm just going to fly just veering off to the left a bit I've turned our autopilot off and I'm just going to fly as low as we can because you don't want to just follow the waypoints blindly now we can follow this little valley here follow this road now should give us good cover because if you follow the waypoints blindly they're probably set up in such a way where the programmers will fly you straight into trouble so you've got to think on your feet and the big 21s they're very close now they're 27 miles away so we're, we're in missile range if they got a lock onto us we'd be in trouble very quickly let's have a look at them they haven't seen us yet they haven't been alerted there they are there's two of them and these are the old older cold war planes and they're still in use today by many countries around the world that can't afford the newer Russian or Western planes and they've had a, had a major third party upgrade program to upgrade these MiG-21s so they have better range 
and better avionics. Still quite dangerous in large numbers. Now this is the city or settlement where the power station is and it's been guarded by some surface-to-air missile launch sites. Now we're flying low and I've got a bad feeling that if we try and gain altitude we'll attract attention so we're going to fly low and fast. I'm going to put my afterburners on and just hope we don't get hit by anything. I don't know if this tactic will work. And we'll see in a minute. I've got my afterburners on full blast. And we're just following this road. There's something else over here. There's a set. Of, there's a tank and a, con a convoy there. And here's the city coming up. And there's a missile launched on us. I can see the power station is just to the left of us, and we've been hit. We've been shot at. And this isn't good. We're deep in enemy territory, and we're on we're on fire. I think. And we've lost our HUD display. And the missile's been launched. I'm launching chaff furiously. And this has gone awfully wrong. And we need to try and get out of here in one piece. And another missile's been launched at us. I'm going to launch chaff. I'm pressing the chaff button like a lunatic here. If we press D, it'll go into recovery mode. And that means it will fly level for us. I think autopilot's been knocked out now, so we need to try and get home somehow. And another missile's been launched at us. I'm just going to head over here. This is where all the green triangles are, just ahead of us. And there's, that's where all the friendly aircraft are, so I need to just head in this direction, I think. Our map display is flickering, so we're going to have to just guess where to go. Our right engine's on fire. It's flashing, so I'm going to turn that off. Because if we keep that on, it might explode. So hopefully that'll put the fire out. Now, because we've only got one engine on, it will want to fly to the right automatically. And none of the missiles been launched at us. I've launched Taff, we broke the lock. Our wingman's okay, I'm just checking up on him. He's just behind us. Now I'm going to tell him to go fingertips on the left because there's an enemy plane just to the left of us. If he's alerted then he'll come looking for us, so he'll have our wingman to contend with first. Right. We've got no navigation, so we're just going to have to fly this manually home. There's our wingman just above us, and uh, you can see there's still a fire in our engines. And we're probably losing fuel fast as well. I'm going to check the damage report. Uh, we've got an engine fire still, air brake is not fully functioning, avionics is out, heads up display is out, hydraulics is uh, damaged, so this is awful, we're gonna, we could, we could crash in deep into enemy territory and that won't be good, right I'm just gonna speed up time and wrestle with the flight stick to fly level and just head over here as quick as we can and this isn't easy got to stay calm though because it's possible to complete this mission but we got to keep our head on from, from what it was 
what should have been a easy reconnaissance mission is, is, is turned into a disaster. So this is how quick a situation can turn in this simulation. And there's some MiGs to the right of us and behind us. Well, they haven't found us yet. You can see their radar envelope's very small, so if we if we crept into it, then I'll get a missile lock and we'll be completely done for then. Right, I'm just gonna keep flying towards these green triangles. That's that's the friendly territory. If we've got to eject, I'd rather eject over friendly airspace. I've no idea how fast we're flying and how much fuel we're losing. You see, you can see the right hand display is flickering, so we've got some clue of where the waypoints are. But it's not much help. If you press the delete button on your numeric keypad, it will show you the map of where you are, and that's sort of a cheat, so. I'm going to pause the simulation and have a quick look and see where we need to go. Well, we're back now and we've got an awful long way to go. And we're losing fuel fast. I don't think we're going to make it. So, we need to land at a friendly airfield, at a divert airfield. Now, one of the objectives is to land at the original airfield that you took off from. So, normally I would probably quit this mission. But, uh, I noticed you can ask for a divert airfield from AUACS. So let's see if we can complete the mission by landing at an alternative airfield. I'm going to fly as far as we can into friendly territory. Now I don't know where the friendly airfields are. They're not marked on the display. That's working now, at least anyway. And we've got literally a quarter tank left now of fuel. I'm going to press D to initiate the auto recovery so we can have a rest a bit. I'm just going to fly, well, if you let go, if you disengage the uh, auto recovery, it'll just flip round. I can't see an airfield. There's all desert here. Ah, oh, there's a road there, and we could follow the road, but we don't know where it'll lead. I think we're going to ask AWACS for our divert air base and see what happens. Okay, there's a friendly air base oh, at 325 degrees for 50 miles, and I think we can do this. I think we can glide about 50 miles if we ran out of fuel now, so there's a good safety margin here. Now, if we go to the compass, that's still working. I'm going to see if we can turn to that heading. I can't remember what it is. If we press R on the keyboard, you can ask them to repeat the instructions. Now, we're on a heading of 46 degrees. Keep pressing R to repeat what they say because because it's not easy to remember whilst trying to f keep this plane upright now I'm going to see what lies to 325 degrees you can see the top of this tactical display that's still working fortunately we're coming up to 300 degrees now luckily we're we automatically go to the right so if we fly level I want to see what there is now on this heading some there should be an airfield just over here now I've selected a ground target to, to act as a marker to fly towards
and it's coming into uh, the view of our infrared search and track display it's some sort of flickering surface to air missile launcher and you can see there there's an airfield so that must be it and all is not lost we just need to try and land this plane we're in range now we're going to ask permission to land we're clear to land now I don't have the luxury of landing on on the runway probably because the plane wants to veer all the time so this is not going to be easy I'm going to jettison the stores by pressing shift and J just so that we won't explode if the undercarriage doesn't deploy, I've no idea if it's going to deploy. And we're just over this airfield now. And I've got a bad feeling our air brake's not working. And we've run out of fuel now. When you jettison all stores, it doesn't actually jettison the internal fuel. That would be a, a disaster if that happened. Normally you'd have to fly around till your fuel's really low if you want to do it, if you want to get rid of your internal fuel. Okay, I need to fly a little bit away from the airfield as we're literally on top of it. And we need to get our speed down. Okay, I think that's enough, and we're gonna turn around. We're gonna turn around very gently. We don't want to lose too much speed because we won't be able to gain it again. And there's no ILS landing HUD mode to help us either. I don't know what our speed is, and I don't know what our altitude is. You can briefly tell by going to the external view, but you won't be able to fly the plane properly. So here we go, we're on our finals approach. And I've got a bad feeling we're too fast. We're going to fly level and straight, and just dip up and down to bleed off speed. Oh, I'm pressing G all the time. And this is this is without the air brake because it's broken. Oh, this is looking really sketchy. I'm holding my breath. Ah! And we must be below 300 knots now. And we've touched down. And we run out of runway. I'm going to use the tow brakes to power slide. And we're coming up to a slow stop. And we've done it, I think, and our engine's still on fire. Now let's hope the mission goals message comes up, and it has. So we've completed this mission. That's excellent. I'm going to show you the next screen to show you that is possible to complete a mission without landing at the original airfield so there we have it fantastic and there's our wingman he's coming in to land as well and we're over here in the grass and you can see the map there where we started off we flew across the sea we got hit over the power station and we flew in a wobbly direction towards the Red Sea but we dis we found out we didn't have enough fuel to make it across the Red Sea so we asked for a divert airbase and then we landed at a friendly airbase in Eritrea as marked by the Red Arrow 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, bye-bye.